Welcome aboard, Kitty. I'm glad you're joining me today. I'm going to share some tips on visual storytelling while I do a one color sketch exercise using water soluble graphite and using this thumbnail as a tonal guide. Okay, now let's get started. First off, I need to make some tonal value swatches. This is very straightforward. I just need to see dark to medium to light values next to each other so that I can have a good feel on how much graphite and water mixture I need to get a specific tone. Doing swatches is also a good way to test out the paper you're using with your chosen medium. I'm using a 5 by 6 inches handmade rag paper from Kadi Papers. This is the first time I'm using this brand of watercolor paper. The paper thickness is 210 GSM and it has a smooth surface. Now it's smooth in a manner that it allows you to draw pencil strokes over it without the paper breaking up your lines. The other type of paper, the rough surface type of watercolor paper, usually called cold press paper, are toothier with bigger valleys and peaks on the paper surface that would make your pencil strokes look dashed or wavy. Which isn't necessarily a bad thing. I'm just pointing out what you can expect when you draw on that type of paper. Alright, before we get started on the main subject, I'd just like to point out that this video series is going to focus on the first lesson I learned about visual storytelling. This video series is not going to be about drawing or painting techniques. Although I may digress a little bit here and there and comment on the medium I'm using and my sketching process, but we're not going to go into too much detail on that. We could probably discuss that in a different video series, but for now we're going to discuss the difference between visual storytelling versus visual communication. So, you want to learn about visual storytelling? Me too. Okay, to be honest, this art lesson is as much a lesson for me as it is for you. I think I have some essential lessons figured out, but I just haven't tried articulating them until now. So in that sense, this is going to be a joint exploration between you and me. To give you a little background, I studied visual communication in university where my major subjects include visual perception, techniques, materials, production methods, visual design, advertising design, editorial design and illustration, visual verbal communication, figure drawing, photography, art history, design theory, and a few others I can't really remember. It was a long time ago. Visual communication in the context of my educational background is a much broader subject matter than visual storytelling. And in the words visual communication, it assumes that you have a message to convey before creating visuals. Whereas with visual storytelling, I learned that the process is usually the other way around. You start off with pictures. You start off thinking in pictures. Then you sketch it out or sketch parts of it and then you make sense of it and then you articulate it so you still end up communicating a message through your visuals but because you didn't begin the process with a made-up statement the end result tends to be revelatory it often leads to a new discovery that even the artist didn't intend to arrive at now I don't want to sound like I'm painting these concepts in black and white although I am painting this sketch in black and white I'm not rating one as better than the other. You could say visual storytelling is just a subset of visual communication. And I would agree. I'm just pointing out the underlying difference between the two. They both produce a visual product with a message, but there is a difference in the creative process of that product, particularly in their starting point. If we look at the process of starting with a message, which is very much like starting off with a conclusion. It's not going to... Let's just say, if I start off focusing on what I know and I tell a story about that, it's going to be less likely that I'll know any better after the process. It's less likely that I'll appreciate the vast amount of other things I know nothing about. So conversely, the process of visual storytelling is actually an exploratory process. It's not a blind process. You are guided by the pictures in your head, after all. You just have to follow where it leads. Okay, this sketch is almost done. 
Let me just take a moment to comment on my paint process in this exercise. Earlier in the video, you notice that I start off painting all the areas with the lightest value. Then as that first paint layer dries up, I paint over a second layer onto the areas that should appear darker. Wait for that to dry, then apply the next paint layer on other areas that should appear even darker than that one. And I repeat those steps until the picture starts gaining volume and depth. When I make a mistake, as you saw in the outline of the wall crack, I rinse out my brush, load it up with clean water, and mop out the part I want to redo. Then I dab the air with a tissue to soak up the excess water. Then I move on to painting other areas first before I apply the correction. Sometimes I still make the mistake of applying the correction too soon. The paper surface hasn't dried up yet, so when I repaint the stroke, it billows out like a cloud or causes a feathering in my outline. When that happens, I just repeat the previous steps to wash out the area and learn to be more patient and wait for the surface to dry up completely. This sketch was based on a photograph I came across in a Google image search. It's a lot of fun rendering cartoon versions of real life subjects. The end result becomes symbolic, iconic, and easier to remember. Perhaps this is why, despite my technical skills in drawing realistic images, I did a lot of those in art school. I prefer the more cartoon style of drawing because it trains my eyes to look for the essence of an environment, the gist of a scene, or the soul of the subject. This makes my illustration more mentally packable for the viewer. And yes, I also prefer cartoon style because they are just much faster to create. Okay, that was fast. We're done with this sketch. Let's continue this discussion in the next video. Thank you for your interest in exploring this subject with me. See you soon!